And I'm going to turn it over uh, to my father-in-law. And I want to tell you, Jennifer and I, we appreciate you so much uh, praying for our babies. Real quick, you know, um, in April, April 22nd, they'll be a year old. I can't believe, just right around the corner. And um, in our pregnancy at 23 weeks, Jennifer went into labor at 23 weeks. We had about eight doctors around our bed that night. And they said, you're in full-blown labor, and these babies are coming tonight. And you need to call your family and call anyone you can to come in, because your babies will have about a 50-50 chance of survival. And they're probably about a pound or so at this point. So we sat there. Tears began to come down Jennifer's face. And I said, listen, I said, we will not fear. <laughs> we will not fear. And I'll say, and I told her in a joke, I said, we weren't planning for these babies. These are God. He has to take care of them. <laughs> and so we began to pray and church began to pray and all those things. And the labor began to cease. And God's hand was upon them. You know, Jennifer was on bed rest for several months after that. And then eventually they came at 31 31 weeks, they were about three pounds a piece. You can't tell today because these guys are little chunky monkeys, I call them. Um, but that was nine months ago that they were born, real early. They spent about six weeks in the NICU, and they had some challenges and things that they had to overcome. And God helped us every step of the way. And I want to thank you, Jennifer, I want to thank you for praying uh, for our children. And it's, listen, my heart, our hearts are overwhelmed to dedicate our own children today in our own church with our own church family. Amen. So thank you for hanging with us for a few moments. Dr. Jones. You don't remember my name? <laughs> Y'all just come over here. Sonny, come over over here, buddy. T today, I, I sat there getting ready for this and oh, for the all I know a lot of y'all don't know who I am. I'm Jennifer's dad and also Jessica. But anyway, um, I got to thinking, fiddle. Sonny's sitting here and it's his blood that's blow. Now, they got, they got part of my flesh and bone, but it's his blood <laughs> that's going through him. I said, he should help. And then I'm thinking next year, you'll help me. With, yeah, we call him Big Larry because that's Larry's dad. And next year will be Jessica. Now then, this ain't my long suit. I'm a blubbering idiot when I'm doing stuff like this. <laughs> and um, before we get into this, I, I just want to tell y'all what's going on. A lot of people in the modern church today don't really understand what baby dedication is. It, it, it's one of the five sacraments of the church. It's one of the five most important things we do. It's not just something that's cute that we do with babies, you know. And, and uh, 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 of course, uh, we don't have time to get into the big long process, and I don't have three hours to preach sermons on it. But but we do have five sacraments. Uh, now the Catholic Church has seven. I don't know if you've heard seven sacraments of the church. We're not Catholic, we're Protestants. We protest Catholicism, we're Protestants. We have five sacraments. This is one of them. When we say sacrament, we generally think of communion. You know, that, that's a sacrament. Well, sacrament is a Latin word meaning the visible manifestation of an invisible grace. So it's when you visibly see something that's happening in the spiritual world. First sacrament is communion, when the bread and the wine becomes the flesh and blood of Jesus. Second sacrament is water baptism, when the old man goes down in the grave and the new man comes up. Uh, third sacrament is laying on of hands. Uh, the man of God, the pastor, uh, when he lays hands on you, that's a sacrament. People say, oh, I wish God would touch me. Well, get down here and let the man of God touch you. <laughs> you know, that is a sacrament. The fourth sacrament is marriage. Uh, when, when two people are, 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 are joined together by God and witnesses, they're, they're physically seeing what's happening in the spiritual realms. The fifth sacrament we have is baby dedication. You say, well, how's that a sacrament? Baby dedication, just as your pastor said just a second ago, it's a vow. It's, it's, it's commitment. It is, it is a covenant that the parents are making with God. Because here's the thing, we come down and giving this kid to God, what's God going to do with it? 
Is God going to change his diapers? Is God going to feed it? Is God going to take care of it? No. He's going to have them do it. So when, when actually when we're coming down to dedicate babies, we're not saying, God, here's my child, take care of it. We're actually making an oath and a vow and a commitment that we will represent God and we will be God to these children and take care of them for God. Because see, what a lot of people don't understand and realize is these two babies right now, when they see mom and dad, they think they're seeing God. They really do. Because this is what provides for them. This is what shelters them. This is what keeps them safe. This is what keeps them warm. Their world is wrapped up in these two. And they, they literally represent God. That's why it is heresy for non-Christians to try to dedicate babies. You can't do it. It's heresy. Because how can a non-Christian who does not follow Christ, how can they represent Christ? How can you stand before God when you don't know him and say, I will be your representative? And where we get this from, first place is in the book of Exodus. We see where the decree has gone out through the land to kill all the male children and to put all the female children into slavery. A guy named Pharaoh did this. And there was a man from the tribe of Levi. He was a priest. He had a wife named uh, Jochebed, and they had a son named Moses. And, 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 and they did not want to see Moses destroyed, so his mother built him a little ark. We call it an ark, a little raft, a little boat. And she pitched it, uh, or, 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 or she sealed it with slime and pitch. Right there is where that tells us it's biblical that parents should control the environment of their kids. You should control the environment of your children. And so that she puts pitch and slime in there and, and, and she puts him on the, uh, uh, the Nile and pushes him out into the bulrushes and says, God, the whole world's trying to kill him. And I can't do anything. The whole world is coming against him. God, you're going to have to help me. But Moses' big sister watched the boat go down the river and we see Pharaoh's daughter pick it up and say oh ain't this cute little Jew baby <laughs> daddy's trying to kill him but I think I'll keep this one <laughs> you know and then Moses' big sister comes to Pharaoh's daughter and says hey you need a nursemaid to help I know one and now God she has given the child to God and God has turned around and made a way for the mom and dad to be the ones that represent God. They actually raised the kid. See what I'm saying? Next place we see is in 2 Samuel, or 1 Samuel, where we have Hannah. She's barren. Can't have kids. And, 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 and her husband's other wives are having kids, but she's not having kids. So why am I cursed? And she's crying and praying and begging God. And the priest sees her one day just moving her lips and no words is coming out. And they think she's drunk. I said, what's wrong with you, woman? And even her husband says, aren't I better to you than ten sons? She said, yeah, but I want a son. And she made a vow to God. God, if you'll just give me a son, I'll give him back to you. And lo and behold, in, 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 in the process of time, she has a son, names him Samuel. She waits till he's weaned, till he's two years old, when he's potty trained and weaned. And then she takes him to the house of God, says, God, I'm going to fulfill my vow. And I'm going to give you my son. The next place we see where children are being given to God, we see a, a young couple just been married not too long. And they're on their way. They're, they're on a trip. They're, 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 they're traveling to a foreign country to pay taxes. And all of a sudden, she's starting to conceive, and it wasn't planned that it happens at that time. They can't find any place to stay, so they wind up staying in someone's barn. And the baby is born in nothing but a feed trough. The Bible calls it a manger. And then we see, we see that mom and dad, after the birth of that child eight days later, they go to the priest, Simeon the Great, and say, we want to give this child to God. And Mary and Joseph takes the child and gives to God. But I want to point something out. You can never outgive God never outgive God and we always hear that when people are talking about offerings well you know uh, you give your offerings God will give you more and that is true that is true you give your tithes and offerings God will give you more but 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 that works a whole lot uh, uh, areas besides money 
It works with labor. It works with time. It works with effort. It works with love. You give, you're going to receive more than you gave. And it also works with your children. <laughs> the priest and his wife, Jacobib, they gave Moses to God as a little bitty baby that's helpless. And God gave them back the deliverer of Israel. <laughs> Hannah. She takes this little snotty nosed two-year-old, ruddy-faced boy and gives him to God. And God gives her back the mighty right fist of God. <laughs> Joseph and Mary takes this little kid out of a feed trough, wraps it up in swaddling clothes and rags, and hands it to the priest, Simeon the Great. And he hands back the Savior of the world. He cannot outgive God. And I believe with all my heart what we're about to do today, God's going to bless. Now I do things a little different than Josh does. <laughs> and I talked to Josh about it. And he said, well, it's not like I do it. And he says, some people might, might be, be concerned it's not done that way. And I said, well, if they want it done that way, they should have married one of my daughters. <laughs> but if you kids will come right over here. And we're going to take some vows. What's so funny? Which one's cutting up? You, you know, I'm just now getting where I can tell them apart. But I still don't know which one is which. I'm always saying, who is that one? <laughs> you know, but it'll come to Papa. But I asked Sonny to help me here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make vows and we're going to make covenants according to the word of God. And to Josh, I'm going to give him, or Sonny's going to give him, a red rose. And Josh, this red rose signifies the rich blood that you got from your father, came to you, and now it's in these girls. And I'm asking you, Josh, do you, Josh, do you vow, do you pledge, do you promise before God and all these witnesses that with your blood you will defend this home if need be with your blood for the shedding of the blood if need be you'll see to it that this home is protected and when I say protected I'm not just talking about some invader coming in your home to do destruction I'm talking about you're going to protect them from poverty you're going to protect them from hunger you're going to protect them from the elements you're going to protect them from nakedness you're going to protect them and you're going to see to it that they are never sent to church but they are taken to church do you vow that? to Jennifer I'm giving the white rose and the white rose signifies the purity that you bring to the home <laughs> statistics tell us that 99 and 9 per, 99 and 9 points percent of the time when children first hear about Jesus it's from the mother you know <laughs> there was a study done here a while back that a Muslim is the most difficult person to win to Jesus Christ than any other religion. It's hard to get someone to, to, to leave the Muslim religion and, and come over to, to Christianity. And they found the reason this is, is because when a Muslim baby is born, the first thing that happens to that baby when they clean it up and hand it to its mother to nurse for the first time, the very first words this baby hears is whispered in its ears by its mama while it's nursing and, it's, and the mother says, Allah is God and Muhammad is his prophet. That's the first words he hears. And the whole time that, 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 that a mother is nursing a Muslim baby, that baby is hearing over and over and over and over that Allah is God and Muhammad is his prophet. Why do we Christians wait to tell our kids about Jesus? until they're six years old and go to Sunday school? Do you vow that you will see to it that as long as these children are in your home, they will hear the name of Jesus constantly. Even if it's no more than looking over at them every once in a while, just saying, Jesus, they got to know who Jesus is. Do you vow you will do that? To these babies, I'm giving daisies. 
<laughs> Blowing Papa a kiss. She became my favorite. Hallelujah. <laughs> Which one is this? Christian, okay. See, a Christian, yeah. <laughs> These babies get daisies which represents innocence. And I'm believing and I'm praying that someday when their eyes of innocence are opened and they're looking at mom and dad, they're not going to see mom and dad. They're going to see Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for the way you have blessed our family. I thank you so much for giving me a man of God like this for a son-in-law. I thank you so much for these grandkids. I thank you so much. And I thank you so much, Father, because I know this is a home built on the solid rock. I'm believing you today, God, that you're going to build a Holy Ghost hedge of fire around this home that Satan cannot pierce, that Satan cannot come through, that Satan cannot harm. And I thank you for it, the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.